All right, Miss Gina, come on up here. Good evening. So first announcement is any of you that have youth age kids, 13 to 18, that have been coming on Wednesday nights, we are switching so they are here on Tuesday nights as well. So that way make it easier for some of you that have kids in preteen and in youth. You can drop them both off and then you can go downstairs to the men's and women's Bible studies and make it a family night. So doors will open upstairs at 6.30 like it does for preteen. So they can just show up at 6.30 and so on. Um, the Nerf Wars is this coming Friday. I know, I'm so excited. So we only have, I'm really trying to contain myself so y'all don't laugh at me, but we're really excited. Mr. Marshall's like trying to figure out where he's going to hide himself and yeah. Oh, <laughs> JT's got his spot. What? <laughs> so um, I still need some more adult volunteers. It doesn't have to be a man because we women can fight just as good as the men can. So I will take women as well. All right, I'll write you down. So just um, if I'm not back there after service, Denise can do it too. We'll just sign you up in our little binder so we have track of who's coming. Um, we're going to decorate Thursday. Well, not decorate, sorry. We're going to set up the war zones. Thursday night at 7. <laughs> I'm going to girlify the Rosas. No, I'm not. Not really. <laughs> so if anybody wants to come and have fun making obstacle courses and booby traps throughout the church, you can come and join us at 7. If you haven't paid for your kids, and I'm saying this on the video for the parents not here too, if your kids are signed up and you didn't pay me, you need to pay me tonight for those in the nursery as well because I only have like five spots left. And the people that we sent invites to, they got them Saturday or yesterday. So I should start getting phone calls. So those last five slots are going to fill up fast. So if you haven't paid, pay me tonight. That's it. I don't. A couple other announcements. If you look in your bulletin, there's a, some bold lettering in there. I think there is. It's got four, letter, four words to it and the very bottom. It says candy and more candy. And if you back up, it says we need candy. And then if you drop down the line after that, it says candy and more candy. Easter's coming. April 1st, it's early this year. So we're going to start collecting candy and we will probably start... We're going to have to start in February stuffing eggs. We only have 40,000 to stuff, so we're just getting started. It's always fun. So just giving you a heads up on that. We've been asked by the school system, if you would like to be a judge of the speech and debate, it's next Friday and Saturday. Um... It's Friday night, Saturday all day. You can pick your times that you're, you can do it. You don't have to be a professional judge. If they're asking us, <laughs> just say it. <laughs> so I have the contact information, the phone number, or the email where you can email, and they'll send you a little thing, a registration where you sign up to do it. And then they'll vet you and away you go. So if you would like to be a judge for the speech and debate uh, next Friday, Saturday, give me a holler after church and I'll hook you up with the, with the information on that. Nobody can hear you. No, I, just, I have been a judge, um, not in a class AA, but in a class C school, and it is super fun and super interesting. They, these students are amazing what they come up with, so it would be a good thing to do. But they might make me look foolish. Ooh, the kids? The kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, ju I judged a science fair one time. Oh, God, forgive those kids. I, I was awful. <laughs> but it was a good time getting in there, and what a better way to, you can't go in there preaching Jesus like we do 
with our classroom. But guess what? You can go and be a witness in there and show a happy face and uh, just be a delight to those kids and parents and everybody that shows up. So I encourage you, if you'd like to do that, hook me up with that. And the last thing I got, small group, if you're not in one, you're going to hear, I'm going to pound you on this this year. If you're not in a small group, you need to get in one. All right, cowboy, you're on. All right, please join me in our set free pledge. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of Jesus. I won't look back or let up, slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sidewalking, chief giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, praised, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith, walk by patience. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions are few. My guide is reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. I will not give up, shut up, let up, till I've stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I draw, preach till all I know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes, my banner will be clear. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, and passes right. Let's get join in on these small groups. We're having a good time. We just started the uh, killing crypt tonight. We've got uh, seven more weeks of that, so uh, please join us. Tuesday night, six thirty, men's, men's and women's, and then uh, still got Marshall and Gina rolling on Monday nights. So. And then DJ Terry every other Thursdays, Fry Bread every other Thursdays. And uh, we have the uh, Maxine's uh, Bible study rolling, Maxine and uh, Rainey's. Uh, we've got sign class on Wednesday night. That's a blast. We have a lot of fun in that class. Um, yep. If you're angry, feel free to come and see us on Mondays. What's that? More help. On the street. Oh, okay. Are you are you rolling? What night are you doing that? Wednesday nights. Meet in the parking lot here. So if you want to do any kind of street ministry, Wednesday nights. Meet in the parking lot. So Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday night afternoon. No, we've got things. Uh, we have things rolling here and the places to plug in. Um, so join us. Um, we'd love to have you. Uh, I mean, all those, we're learning things. Um, it's funny the things that just pop up all the time. I can't remember all the technical words. I was watching something today, mainly I was watching it for lumps. It was on uh, shooting techniques, shooting a pistol, of all things. And this guy was all about focus. And he was all about focus on the front sight. And his teaching was, and he had a couple of examples, was when we focus <clears throat> and we're trying to look at the far end, and we're not staying focused where we need to stay focused, our eyes wander. And our eye in that whole movement is voluntary. It's not involuntary, it's voluntary. So immediately I'm thinking, man, when I don't keep my eyes on Jesus... Things start moving. <laughs> and I can't aim right. I can't aim and stay focused. And again, that's my word groovy anyway. That's my, I stay in the groove. So, um, Jesus is in everything we look at. Just need to apply. And one of the other things this guy said in his little program was, and I love this, and we're going to say this about Jesus Christ, try it 
and trust him. Amen? And that was just off a of YouTube video, so that was just like, and how to shoot a gun. <laughs> so, if you bow your heads with me, we're going to bring in tonight's offering. Father God, Lord, we truly trust you. Father God, you just, uh, I know when we are listening and paying attention and staying focused, Lord, oh my goodness, your presence is mighty. Father God, we just need you so much in that way. So Father God, just help us to focus. Just keep that beeline on Jesus. Because Father God, we know that truly is the answer. His transforming power is tremendous if we can just grab hold and run with him. So Father God, we thank you for tonight as we give. And Father God, I just pray the night as we, uh, as we bring in tonight's offering, as we begin to trust, try him, trust him, and as we begin to tithe and just give back. May that be our exercise as we just learn how much you really love us. So Father God, I just pray tonight, we just scream in our hearts, we want to try you and trust you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. the body. We're here for one another, but then we can call on the Lord. Amen? Amen. He is our fortress. We can be there for one another. Just step out and ask.
Lord. We do. We say amen. So be it. Did you know amen meant so be it? So when you pray and you say amen, that means you're putting your total trust that God heard your prayer. Amen. We take you at your word, Lord. the truth, don't you? And we can worship in spirit and in truth. That's what we need. Not 
just a simple fun song but you know what the truth stands out that Jesus says worship me in your spirit and in truth and when you know him you know the truth when you have the word in you you have the truth thank you Lord we love you Lord tonight we worship you Lord we stand Lord in awe of who you are King forever.
stand in awe of you, Father God. Lord, totally surrender, Lord, every thought. Lord, empty us of ourselves. Lord. Let us be abandoned in your presence, Father God. Lord, even as a police officer says, just raise your hands in the air. Lord, it's total surrender, Father God. Lord, there's nothing hidden. There's nothing kept from you, Father God. We surrender all to you, Father God. Because all we have is yours, Father God. Lord, that we were fashioned and formed before the foundations of the earth, Father God. And Lord, you knew the plans that you had for us before we were even thought of in this world, Father God. That you created us in your image, Father God. And Lord, that you love us unconditionally. Lord, in undemanded worship to you, Father God, we praise you. Lord, open our hearts. Till that hard ground that's hidden underneath, Father God. We know the topsoil has been churned, Father God. But Lord, those deep roots that are way down deep, Father God, that are still, Lord, poking and prodding us and hindering us, Father God. Weed them out, Father God. Kill the roots, Lord, that are hidden, Father God, that are keeping us from all that you have for us. Father. Purify our hearts. Renew our mind, Father God. Make us more like you. Lord, let us learn to love like you love, totally unabandoned. Lord, we surrender all to you tonight and give you the praise and the honor and glory for it all. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Right on. So are you truly surrendered? to the Lord Jesus. And I got to come over here. I'm Pastor JT. I'm Laura. Laura, yes. it's good to have you. Thank you. So we got a different lady up here. Be behave yourself. <laughs> this time of year, Let me preference for what I'm going to say here. This building's paid for. All our vehicles are paid for. We got money in the bank. Financially, Set Free Ministries, Great Falls, Montana, is in great shape. Okay? So, no, 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 clap. Don't clap. Do not clap. This is the time of year that I go through our giving statements to see what you guys give to set free. And I hate to tell you this, but you guys break my heart. And I don't want to chastise you because I asked you, I said, do you believe in this 100%? Because in Micah, and I'm, I'm going to get into something else in this, but some of you are in financial straits. And can I tell you why you're there? It's because you do not tithe. And we don't, can I say it again? We don't need your money. I'm not asking you to tithe because set free needs your money. Honest to God, we don't need your money. But I'm telling you this so that you'll be blessed. We had the wreck in the hallway well up actually upstairs it came all the way down the hallway all this stuff we had the heat cranked up in here the heat bill's been really good since we put all the new windows in and all that stuff so here jt and his worry which he shouldn't be worrying go to the post office this week open a letter And there's a $2,000 check in the mail. So it's like I told Mike, I said, here I'm worried about the heat bill. 
and about what's going to happen. And God already knew what was going to happen, so he already had the check on its way. And when it's, it's not going to be 2000 bucks, but it was a lot higher than what it normally is. But God has got it all covered. If, two-letter cuss word, if you do what you're supposed to do. So this, let me read this to you real quick. And I, again, I'm not, I don't want to smash you. All I want to do is you be blessed. Malachi 3, in verse 8, it says, Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me, but you ask, How are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse. If you're not tithing, you're under a That's why you're not financially prospering. Can I be dead honest with you? And you say, well, some of you say, well, I only get a certain amount every month. Well, tithe off that certain amount and watch God move mountains for you to get other financial stuff coming in. I've watched it happen time and time and time and time and time again. Your whole nation... Because you are robbing me, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. This is where God says to test him. Test me in this. And I've thrown this thing out numerous times. I'm not even going to do it anymore because it's, it's between you and the Lord. I used to give out a three-month thing. If you tithe for three months and you were still in financial straits, I said I would personally, not the church, me personally would pay your bills. I'll just smile at you. I've had a couple of people take the challenge but never finish. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open God, throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your microwaves and your refrigerators. Come on. I will prevent pests from devouring your suburban and washers. You ever think about how all of a sudden you think you're getting a little bit ahead and then something blows up? Man, I was just starting to get there. And you know what some people say? I was just about ready to tithe. And then my suburban quit working. So I had to take that money and the enemy just ate that right there. Now I, I got I to straighten this all out because just because you tithe doesn't mean something's not going to go wrong. Okay? Don't think that, oh man, I'm going to start tithing. Hey, man, everything's going to last forever. That ain't going to happen either, okay? I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. And if you read all this, the faithful remnant and all that stuff, and I'm, I'm going to get off of this because I really do. I hate talking about money because it's one of the things that people use against the church they say oh, all that church wants is your money I don't want your money I'm telling you straight up but if you don't tithe you're not going to reap the benefit plain and simple so enough of that Jesus loves you by the way let me smile at you. Just be faithful to his, and he'll be faithful to what he says he's going to do. You do your part, guaranteed. You know, who, who's always the weak, weak link in this deal? Just raise your hand. We are. We're the weak link. Because things start to roll pretty good, and then something happens and we give up on God. I got a text this morning from some person, not from here, and uh, pray for me, I'm ready to give up, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. 
I said, so you've been walking with Jesus now since see, you know, September, October, November, December, January, February. Six months. Expecting God to fix 40 years of destruction. Anybody in this boat with us? And then six months, God's supposed to just take a little magic wand and go, I'm going to hit you in the head. And everything's supposed to be roses. Come on. We serve an amazing God. And He'll take so good care of you. I can go, again, I can just our own personal stuff of how... In fact, I'll just do the dryer. Is it, what? She just bought this, what, six months ago? Brand new washer and dryer. And she hollers from the back one day. Day after Christmas. John! <laughs> uh, yes, dear? The dryer's not working. Oh, come on. We just bought that thing. Everything lights work. Everything. So I go back there. I can fix anything. And I couldn't fix it. So I get on the telephone and call the company. And they told me that I had to take it to a registered dealer in town. Thank you. That's not what I wanted to hear. But they gave me two places to call. So I called the one. They said, we don't even work on that stuff. We can't even get parts for that. I said, it's brand, they're brand spanking new. Well, we don't even get work on that stuff. I'm looking at her like, oh no, we're in big trouble. Call the next place and they say, what was it? That they couldn't come and they didn't have the parts, but did you throw the breaker to it? I said, well, I unplugged it and plugged it back in. No, no, no. Did you throw the breaker to it? You're insulting my intelligence. <laughs> no, I didn't throw the breaker to it. So anyway, hung up, went down, threw the breaker, waited 10, 20 seconds, threw the breaker back on, walked back upstairs, unplugged it, did their little reset that they told me how to do, plugged it back in, reset it, and guess what? It worked. And I'm just back there praising God, passing the pizza. Because where we live, for them to come out and service it is a big expense. And to me to unload it up and haul it back in is a pain in the rear. Anybody been there before? Have you had your microwave just go, and you say a couple four-letter words at it? Just being honest, we're set free. The day before Christmas, she pulls up outside out here in her car and calls me. <laughs> or no, you called me up on the 10th. Uh, there's something wrong with my car. Come on, girlfriend. No, I mean, there's something wrong with my car. So she gets down here and something is wrong with her car. So I can fix that. <laughs> let's go get two cans of heat dump it in there we'll get two cans of heat dump it in there run her up and I didn't fix it ended up having to call the tow truck tow truck take it over to Falls Tire Falls Tire tried something that didn't work had to tow it from Falls Tires to Taylor's Taylor's was going to tow it all the way out to Fort Benton but instead shipped it across the street to City Chevrolet. And thank God, you know, sometimes God will tell you to do something, like put an extended warranty on something. It took us two weeks, but we got it back, and guess how much money we paid? Zero. Even the tow truck driver, of course he's a good friend of mine, Sent the guy out there says, don't charge him, it's JT. God will do... That's just me and her. I can give you stories from all over around in here of people, of things that are going... Just be faithful to this. 
And this is going to get into right where we're going because we're going back into Luke. You know, we spent all last year going through Luke. We're only in chapter 9. So turn to Luke chapter 9. And again, I'm going to tell you, I love you. Jesus loves you. And I just want to see the best for you guys, okay? All right. So how many of you know there's a cost to following Jesus? So turn to verse 57. And I'm going to preempt it with this. How many of you know there is never a done in ministry? You might have completed a task. You might have completed an assignment. But there's never a... And let's put it this way. There's never a retirement in ministry. When I hear preachers say, man, I can't wait till I get to my retirement. I'm like, what are you going to do when you retire? I'm going fishing. I'm going this. I'm going that. We'll see how long that lasts for the Holy Spirit beats your brains in and you'll be back out doing something else. Until the day somebody plants you, or Jesus comes back, guess what? You're on an assignment for the Lord somewhere, someplace. Whether it's in Great Falls, Montana, whether it's Sturgis, South Dakota, whether it's Israel, whether it's Africa, whether it's Japan, Austra- I don't care. Wherever you are, guess who else is there? If you got Jesus in you, Jesus is there too. And he, I really believe, expects us to talk about Jesus. Because people all over the world need to hear about the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Period. I can't remember the stats. We were, Michael and I were just at a place in listen to a a church planner guy out of California. This might sound funny to you. There's, what did he say, there was nine or ten sin cities that they have on the west part of it. And a couple of those you're going to name. Name the two that you're going to say. In Frisco. There you go. So you would think those would be the two hardest places to plant a church. And this is what he said. Those people are so lost, when the light comes on that they need help, guess where they run to? They run to church. There's a ministry, and I'm going to have to look this up, right in the smack middle of downtown San Francisco that's running 800 people in it. 800 people sold out on fire for Jesus Christ in the middle of San Francisco. You say, come on. I'm taking his word for it, and I believe he was telling us the truth. There's churches in Vegas that are just popping up all over the place. And not 10, 20 member churches, big churches. And outreach is going on all the time. You're on assignment for Jesus Christ wherever you go. Where do you work? Don't say it out loud. Where do you work? You're on assignment for Jesus at work. And I'm not talking about standing up and going, you're all going to hell if you don't turn to Jesus. That's a good way to get out the job. But you can go in there and do what? Shine your light by your example on how you live. Hello? You come in there complaining, whining, moaning. Ain't nothing going on around right here. It never goes right. No, oh my God. Oh my God. And they're going to say, are you a Christian? Praise God. Yes, I am. <laughs> Don't tell them you go to set free, okay? Because you know what they're really looking at? They're looking at you going... <laughs> but if you go in there with a great attitude, a loving spirit... People are going to notice something's different with you. And in there it says we're a peculiar people. 
And we need to be a fool for Jesus sometimes. Where are you going to school? Where do you stop and get coffee at every morning? I got the Christian crack house right down the street. I stop every morning. They know exactly what I believe and where I stand for. Is there a place that you go to every day? Or maybe every other day? Where do you stop going to, going to work or maybe coming from work? Where do you go to dinner quite a bit? Some of us are junk food junkies around here. And you pull up into the drive through It's kind of like me at True Brew. They already know what I want before I get there. And in fact, if I'm stopping to get coffee for my wife, i got to be going like this. Don't make mine! Come on. They already know what I want before I get there. So if I pull up there and go, your coffee sucked yesterday. How would that work? Now every once in a while, they got a new person in there making coffee. And sometimes it sucks. <laughs> True? Not everything is going to be perfect. But do you think I pull around, back around there and say, Oh my gosh, who made this? No. I'll tell you what I did do one time though, way back in the day. The gal was actually coming to church and there was one person in there that Every time I pulled up and I seen him, she was making my coffee, I was going, oh, Father God, no. And so I told this gal, I said, you know, there's that one gal in there. I said, I've never had a good cup of coffee from her yet. She said, really? I said, really? <laughs> she went back and she told me afterwards, they retrained her. She was doing the press and all that stuff wrong. So it wasn't her fault. She was just doing it wrong. Retrain her, guess who was making one of the best cups of coffee after that? That girl. You can address issues without being a... Yeah, that's a good word right there. Jerk. <laughs> okay? I'm never going to get to this, am I? I'll just write, read what I wrote here. It says, you may complete an assignment. You may have a vacation. But then there's another assignment ahead. We don't do ministry. We are the ministry. And the ministry is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And if you get used to the lifestyle of ministry, it can get really fun. So what's it going to cost you to follow Jesus? Ten, how much time do I got? One minute? Did I even read the scripture? I'm going to read it and maybe we'll get into it next week. How's that? We're never going to get out of Luke. So verse 57, as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go, talking to Jesus. And Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And he said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus replied, no one, who look, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. That's a tough verse. And we're going to get into that next week. Amen? Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for this crew. Lord, I pray that we would get some of the basic things of tithing, of offerings, of just giving, Lord. That it just wouldn't be a head knowledge, but it would be a heart knowledge. And Lord, we'd start having testimonies of people of how you 
have taken care of them. Lord, I'm not preaching, I never will preach a prosperity gospel. But Lord, you're faithful to your word. And you will take care of all of our needs. Lord, just help us to be faithful. Remind us, encourage us. And Father, I pray that some of these folks will just test you on your word. I thank you for your son Jesus and all that he's done for each and every one of us. Father, I pray 2018, it's a new year. New life. New creation. New things in our lives. Father God, help us to get focused in, locked in on Jesus. Find out where he's working and go join him. And just have fun serving you. So I thank you for that. Thank you for all of our volunteers. Thank you for this whole bunch of people here, Father God, and those that couldn't be here tonight, I pray you touch and heal those guys that are sick and in, in pain, and one having problems with their sight, Lord, I just pray you just minister to them, I, and we give this all to you in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, I love you, and I hope to see you next week.